Welcome back to the channel, people. It's Lee Judges. It's myself, Dan Potts. And we got Sean with us as well from Spurs Talk Show. But we do have Deji joining us. Why do we have Deji joining us? Because Henry is moving house and it's okay. taken him four months. I don't understand this. Every time Spurs lose, he's moving house again, Lee. What's happening here? He's, he's, he's had more moves than a removal firm, and he like, you know what I mean? Unbelievable, like, you know. I'm going to start calling his Pickford from now on, like, he's had more moves. You know? 100%. That's um, outrageous. outrageous. That means, he's leaving that means, me to, to hold up the fort here as a Tottenham yeah, fan I, I after know, the worst he, performance of our season. I'm sh shameless. It's unacceptable from him. Unacceptable. He's uh, mad. It is mad. I can't believe it, personally. But big up to Sean, because you've come on, mate. Fair play to you. Do you know what I mean? Fair play to you. Because it weren't a good weekend for you, mate. Oh, we gave a little... bit of stick, didn't we, Dan? We gave wow, a bit of stick. we did give a bit of stick. I thought, let's put a, let's put a nice little... Do you know what? Actually, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this now, right? I'll tell you this now. I put, I put a WhatsApp group together, not knowing <clears throat> that Sean had paid money with his ticket to go to the game. And it just made it me feel quite bad after it, I must say. Because you're a good lad, Sean. But my well, God, I you told me to get uh... battered, mate. And wow. It weren't pleasant. It was your bro. birthday weekend as well, Dan. That's the thing, right? It was oh, part of the birthday no. treat, right? Big 40, and then Tottenham go and Happy do that birthday. for you. You know? Cheers. Did yeah. you go on the boat? Did you go on the boat? No, I didn't go on the boat, no. But I met everybody when they got off the boat. I was I met them all in the um in the, the weather spoons in Putney. Um, but yeah, the boat was apparently quite quite lively on the yeah, way. It's always, it's always a good thing that is, you know. So uh Yeah. Uh, Listen. It was I not because he did no. send us his picture in with the ticket. And everything. <laughs> <laughs> I we shouldn't laugh. We shouldn't laugh. It's no <laughs> of us to laugh. You know what I mean? So it was funny because I was actually uh, visiting my parents, and it was uh, dad said, "Oh, they'd gone to like one of the caravan sites. They take a caravan everywhere." And they said, "Oh, got this caravan site. Got clubhouse. Should we go watch the football?" I said, "What game should we watch?" Because they both want the same time. My dad said, oh, "If you did TV, what if BBC will watch Man City?" He went two 0 up, and I thought, "Ah, oh, bloody hell!" So, like, Dad, should we go watch, see what our Tottenham are doing over in the clubhouse? <laughs> I was so glad I went over there. And we sat there, and I thought, "Does that say one 0 Oh, blimey, this will be a good game then. And then it just kept going from there, Sean, mate. I mean, I will say this: everyone said everyone was talking about how bad Tottenham were, but Fulham were actually pretty good as well, right? We got to give Fulham yeah, yeah. credit. You know what I mean? Because I was just on a show with a Fulham fan on my channel and he was like, oh, same old media, Tottenham were rubbish, Tottenham this, Tottenham that, nothing about my club, Fulham. And I thought, actually, he's he's right there, you know, because I didn't hear anything about how good Fulham were. It was all about how crap Spurs were. So it is always about concentrating on the top six all the time, isn't it, Sean? You never ever look at it. Because we, we got beat at Fulham. They're a good side, mate. Yeah, Great. Good time, good time, good time, good time, good easily. Yeah. yeah. yeah Sean was just saying off air that our worst performance was against Fulham uh, this season. Tottenham's worst performance against Fulham. Maybe Fulham make you play like that. I don't know. Because... A hard place to go. At the cottage. At the cottage. I think for a team like Tottenham, because we're such a narrow team when we invert our fullbacks and we've got wingers that, that aren't really doing at the moment what we ask of them or what I think Ange wants them to do, which is to try to get to the byline. I hope it's a work in progress because they're all everyone's trying to come narrow playing like a mohawk. But then you look at Fulham when we break, when they when they break, they've got such good width. You know, Alex Awobi is a really dangerous, dangerous player. Um, Castagna on the right, right back really suits Fulham's play. And when he's not there, Kenny Tete, like I'm, I'm really impressed with him generally as a, as a fullback. And on the left hand side, you've got Anthony Robinson, who I think is one of the most underrated left backs in the Premier League. And so Very when Fulham fan. do when Fulham break against Tottenham, especially when we're playing Basuma in the six, who He's not really threading passes like we want. He's his his way of breaking the press is to to run with it, which is fine. But if his then if his attempt to sort of to offlay the passes or if he's dispossessed at any point, there's nobody behind. And then you've got the Fulham players that can just wave, wait, you know, just they can just run at you in waves. And you know, it kind of felt like at half time, I went outside for an early, early beer and burger, like 40th minute. And I was watching the last five minutes on the TV. And as soon as we went one nil down, I was like, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen anything from Tottenham right now to, to feel like we're going to get back into this. Apart from traditionally Tottenham played better in the second half, but then you go two nil down in the 47th minute or 48th minute. And it's just from then on, it was, it was nonsense. It took us to go three nil down to step on a little bit. And we had a couple of chances mm. where Timo Werner missed a sitter, Brennan Johnson missed a sitter, but 
not good enough. Not good enough. But like you say, guys, Fulham at the cottage becoming a difficult team and not a place where many of the top six do very well, at least this season. So, mm, Listen, it's a tough one. And Liverpool, Man City, Lee, have both got to go there to Craven Cottage. Do you know what I mean? In this title race. And no one's looking at those fixtures, Judge. You know, everyone's looking at the, oh, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Ah, oh, Fulham will brush over that one. Oh, but they have got Man United, Old Trafford and Liverpool got to go Villa away. Uh, Craven Cottage could be one that surprises people, Judge. Without a doubt, you know, they've taken uh, points off us. We 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 couldn't beat them this season, home and away. Um, and uh, they've gone to Old Trafford and won. Uh, they've beaten Spurs now. Um, I, I, I think that they're a tricky opponent for, for all teams uh, at the top. I think the way that they play is is um, one of those... I don't know if Sean agrees with me, but like, there's one of those teams that... The better the team, the more more um, they can get out of it because they sit in deep and then they attack you very very quickly on the counter attack. And mm-hmm. they they what it seemed to me is that they just waiting for Spurs to make errors in going to certain places and then they exploited it. Done it against us to to a certain degree. Do you remember in those wide areas, Kivia was in all sorts of problems, um, yeah. and, and they scored from uh, left to right, you know, and. Um, <clears throat> Caught us on the break on a, on a on a on a few occasions as well, and I tell you what they have got they have got some decent players. Not what I would say world star player. You think oh, oh he's a great player or he's a great player, but they've got a decent squad of players. You know their central defenders are decent, their fullbacks are decent, more than decent. Their fullbacks, to be fair, yeah. very very quick uh, midfield players, very um, underrated. I think they're in in there. Um, Lukic looks a decent player, I've got to say that. And up front there, they've got someone that's scoring goals for them. You know, the first goal that they scored was a good good first touch and a good finish. You know, once he got into that position, how many times do you see a player get in that position and blast it over or whatever like? Right. Good finish. Um, and I, I thought at the end of the day, I, I, I listen, I, I didn't think Spurs were that great. But I, I have to say this, the first goal in the Premier League is a big, big thing. And yeah. if Song takes that chance in the first half, it's a different game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it was funny because even when it went one, I was like you, yeah. I was watching the I was watching the City game, and then it was that was over. And then I thought I watched the game, and and I see this Fulham were having chance after chance, playing really well. And you just said, even when they went one new up, you said, "Our oh, Spurs are going to come back and nick it." Like, yeah. and they, and they never did. It, you know, it, they they just never got out of whatever gear they was in, or, or, or Fulham didn't allow them to. And and in the end, it was a a good night, and um, you know, match of the match of the day was recorded and watched. Simple as that, night. Eh? <laughs> Absolutely, it was, man. And I mean, Sean, does this put you in a bit of a? A lot of people saying Ange Ball's been found out and all this stuff. Um, you lost the game. That can yeah. happen. Do you think that there's a worry at Spurs? Was it? Or did you look at that performance and think, wow? Because I've got to say, there are some performances that I would find pretty worrying. I don't know what's happened to Kulisevsky this season, but I ain't seen him since Conte signed him 18 months ago. Basuma, I don't know what's happened to him. I mean, he's been, he was terrible. Um, yeah. You know, so I look at some of the individual performances and I think that would probably, maybe that would be more worrying the actual team performance itself. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, what do you think? Look, it's, it's a very split. There's a, the fan base is kind of split at the moment. The half the people that are seeing Ange's tenure so far were very much glass half full, and they're kind of treating it as like you know he's only six months in. You've got to give him time to embed the system. You've got to give the players time to learn the system. He still needs a few more players. I think you made with Bissouma. Uh, he's one example of a player that's a good player, but I'm not sure fits the the model. We're looking for a six that I think we haven't got. I was saying it from the start of the season. I think there's a monster six that needs a certain, like a specific set of criteria. And uh, I don't think Tottenham have got it, not in Benson core, not in him, certainly not in skip. If anything, I looked at the stats, the thing, the player that I think most fits the six that we need is Hoybier, but he wants out. And so that, you know, maybe the, the right number, the right guy for, you know, for Tottenham next season, I doubt we'll get him, but he's playing on the other, on the other team um, on the weekend in Polini. I think he, he oh, might be able to be that kind of player that that we need, but there's a few other additions we need. And so I think it's too early to tell, too early to kind of certainly um, throw the towel in the ring with with regards Ange. Anyone who's going down that path, I think, is is really harsh. But I do think that he is very inflexible with his tactics. I think he's quite stubborn. I don't think he, mm. I don't think he's come up to this level before. 
And so having this idea of a one one trick pony, I think um, if if that's all it's ever going to be is this way, it's our way, it's how we play, mate. I think that we're going to have trouble. But what I'm hoping for is that for him, it's more important right now in, in the first season for him to get the priorities of the philosophy embedded in the squad. And then once that is kind of cemented, then you can start to pivot. Then you can start to throw in a few different kind of um, sort of tactical adjustments here and there. Because if it's just this this the whole time and nothing changes from it, regardless of the situation or the circumstance, then I think that at this level, we might be found out by the, some yeah. of the, you know, the very best managers out there. So I'm not particularly worried. Obviously, this season, I, th I still think top four is very much mm. on. I don't think we're going to do any better. I know we've got Deji coming on who still thinks we're going to uh, be able to catch you lot. But I'm, I'm throwing in the towel on that particular pursuit for this season. Um, but next season, I'm expecting a few more players and hopefully a bit more. Um, we're ironing out the inconsistencies of our defence because there's a lot of them at the moment. I think, right, with Tottenham, <clears throat> I think your first eleven's good. I really do, actually. But I think 140 or 150 million that were spent on Richarlison, Brennan Johnson... Obviously, Pulisevsky, Timo Werner, I know, is alone. That's poor. Like, you've got to do yeah. better there. Like, 150 million is a lot of money. Well, it's not a lot of money. It's day and age, but you get me. It's quite a lot of money. So, you mm. throw it around on those three players and you think to yourself, could we have done better there? You know, for example, would Pedro Neto have been a better option than a, a Brennan Johnson, for example, for 50 million? Maybe you couldn't have got Pedro Neto for 50 million, but you get my point. You could put that towards yeah, him yeah. at least. Do you know what I'm saying? I think that is where you've got to be looking at it. And, you know, like, I understand Kulisevsky was Conte's and he looked unbelievable when he came in. I must say, I thought he was a brilliant player. Kind of not been as good this year. I'm not so sure Brennan Johnson is a Tottenham player, if I'm honest, from what I've seen. I think he's shambles, but I don't look at him and go, yeah, I can see him lighting it up. But Charleston's way too hit and miss. Obviously, yep. Werner it just doesn't look like it's going to happen for him at Tottenham like it didn't at Chelsea, in my opinion, unless you, you can tell me different, Sean. But you're still basically relying on Son up there. Now, I know you're scoring goals and it's not the problem at Spurs that you can't score a goal. But I do think that if you was to actually add some lethal firepower, then mm. you would have a chance next season of doing quite well, I think, Sean. Yeah, I, yeah, I completely agree. I think for me, one hundred percent. I think I still think that we need a midfielder that can sit in front of the back four and protect the centre backs a little bit, yeah. and, and be able to spray passes. I think for me, that's the biggest hole in the team. Up the top end, I think we need more variety, and I think we need players that are more um, that are more driven at doing the one on one stuff, taking players on. Pedro Neto would have been great, but listen, you, you go and put seventy million on him, and you're only going to get twenty five percent of the games because the guy's always injured. So. I don't know if you're going to get your money back in terms of value out of a player. He's brilliant when he plays, but how often does he play? But there's loads of players out there that do a little bit more in the driving and the winger kind of the, the old school winger model that we don't have. Brennan Johnson's very fast, but he's fast without the ball, not fast with it. And in in our system, you, you've got to be better with the ball. Kulisevsky, I, I, I understand a lot of people that get frustrated about Kulisevsky, but I personally think his work rate and what he does it goes a little bit under the radar. I think he's a very good player um, in, in other ways that are not necessarily always visible. Um, Richarlison, I agree with you. I don't want him. If we can get our money back from him, I, I, I'd take bite your hand off. And then, you know, Timo Werner and start. I think that that will just be a value for money trade. But yeah, I think Tottenham need to go and drop £130 million on a brilliant striker and at least one top, top class winger who can who can cause a bit more havoc and be a little bit more dangerous driving at players getting to the byline. Someone like a Rafinha, someone, you know, someone like a Nico Williams, whoever, take your pick. There's loads of them out there. It's just about whether mm. Daniel Levy will um, will back the manager in what he needs. Well, he needs to, Lee, Daniel Levy. He needs to back Ange Postacoglu. Um, I think they could do with a couple of wingers and I think they definitely need a centre forward. They can't just keep relying on Sun. I think Sean's bang on about a creative midfielder and a holding midfielder because if Pesuma and Madison are out, they're pretty screwed. Lo Celso and Hoiberg are the backup options. And I think that's what Spurs are looking at now. Maybe a couple of first-teamers, but definitely some strength in depth after that because injuries have destroyed them this year, Lee. Because, you know, fair play to them. They did all right at the start, but they had injuries and that just killed them. And I don't think they've ever really recovered from that, Judge. Yeah, like, and also you've got to get up to speed again once you've been injured. And I think people don't realise that, you know, you have a couple of games back and the adrenaline room gets you through it and then you've got to go through the grind and then, like, for Van der Ven again, he's picked up another injury and things like that. Like, I just think with Spurs at this moment in time, I was talking to, to my mate who was a big Spurs fan. I had a good conversation with him about it. You know, so for Kulicheski, for instance, maybe has just uh, 
it hit a ceiling now and he, he hasn't been able to get go through that like because I think he started off sensationally well as, as you said but now he's, he's hit a wall and he can't get over that like doesn't look the same player for whatever reason like you know and maybe that's why he um, <clears throat> didn't make it a Juventus because of that reason started off well I, I don't know just hasn't sort of kicked on that can happen to players I've, I've just looking at Brendan uh, Johnson he's, he's playing uh, you know Wales are winning now 3-1 he's playing as in the centre forward role so maybe that's something that they can look at Tottenham uh, to try. Uh, he's done quite well there today. He's looked dangerous. He's looked dangerous. Created a, a few, few. I know it's you know international level, but maybe that I, I would give him a little bit more time because I think he's a little bit raw at this moment in time. Um, I think the Spurs have got to have it. But seriously, and this is I'm, I'm talking as a Spurs fan. He, uh, he was talking. He was talking. My Spurs. I was talking as a Spurs fan, not me. He was like, you know. What I was like, get that right. He was saying, which is that the, the couple of things out. Well, this, this. He, he addressed the Ange thing, and he said, "Look, at the end of the day, he's done well for us this season. He's he's uh, made us uh, more entertaining. Are we any better than last season? That's debatable because if you look at points and things like that, but." At the end of the day, fans are enjoying it a little bit more, so he'll take that. But there will be consequences going forward if that continues to happen, where all of a sudden, like, you know, um, you um, don't get what you want to get and then people will start going, oh, well, we've got to be a little bit different. So I think he, he will have to change and develop as a manager from that point of view. And the other thing is, and it is a thing is where... You know, he made a very good point. He goes, "Where, where would you put uh, the bi the biggest and best teams in England? Where would you put them? Where, where where'd you say?" So I turn around and say, "Well, Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal. Um, I, I would say probably like um, who, who else would you go into it? Like you know, Chelsea, mate. You know, what I mean, in there, Manchester City have got to be in there. I'm talking about biggest clubs. You know, so so he said, "Yeah, all right, stop there." So I, 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 he said, like, so so really, you're saying Tottenham, sixth, seventh biggest club in the in the country. I, I would I would have said take out Chelsea and Manchester City before the money come in. I'd put Spurs in front of them, Aston Villa um, above them too as well. If I'd be really honest, but they're in there. They're in the equation now. And and, and so I said, yeah, yeah. So so he says six, and six isn't good enough for Spurs fans now. It isn't. Yeah, no, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? But when you yeah. look at it and when you, where you're thinking of it, I see what he's saying. But because Spurs have done so well under Pochettino and, and, and have done well in the last few years and everything like that, you know, Levy gets it, oh, he's getting a little bit of stick for this and whatever. He has made Tottenham cons cons constantly, consistently over the last sort of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, a top four side. Mm. In, a, in a in a league where they're probably the sixth biggest club in the, in it, like you know, so you have to give them credit for that, like you know, and and so so, so keep pushing. When you keep pushing, you, how far can you go? And um, oh, you know, it, it is I difficult. think that's where the Tottenham fans have been frustrated, though. And I do understand. I'm with you. What you've just said, I think Daniel Levy's done very good things at Spurs, right? Because in my time of supporting them. They ain't really been competitive until he started to actually take it seriously. They've got an unbelievable stadium where you can talk about the good things he's done, right? But I think where they'll question mark, where I'm sure you can come in with this because I'm sure you get a debate all the time. What what next? Question mark. And I think that's yeah. what they want to know. Where's the ambition to go for a title next? I think that's what Tottenham fans want. Yeah, no, not I, just to finish it off with what my mate was saying, it, it, it's to get to that next stage is very, very difficult. It's yeah. very, yeah, very it's the hardest. It's the hardest bit, right? It's the hardest part now. Yeah. So yeah. To, to push on and and what what is it? There is fr, fr, um, what's the word he, he, he used was there were there's um, fr, fractions of fans that are are going one way and others are going another way. Do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Like you know, and and he, he, you're, you're dead right. What you're saying there. This next bit, where what 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 do they have to do? To break the mould, you know, I mean, don't, and this is like, don't forget, this is the last two, three, four, five seasons without Man United ever getting into their stride. What happens if they get back into their stride? You know what I mean? So it's a yeah, very, very difficult time. Where, how do you get? Out? Same for Arsenal. How do you get into that um, elite bit? It's very, very difficult. Like you know, for for, for instance, for 
if, if, if Arsenal are going to win the league, Dan, if, we, if, if Arsenal are going to win the league, we have got to get um, nine wins. Right? Add, add that onto your top, that's top, top, your other eight. So that's, to what? so from January, you've got to win 17 consecutive games in the <laughs> league to win, to win it. That's bloody hard to do, whether you're Spurs, Arsenal, Manchester City, and whatever. But that's what you're up against now. So it's very, very difficult. Do you think that, Sean, like with Levy? Because I know you've got a different opinion to some Spurs fans I've spoken to that hate him and want him out. Like, yeah. what would you like to say? What, what do you think is good that he's done? And what do you think you would like to see next from him at Spurs? I think he's one of the best chairmen in the Premier League. I, I know that Tottenham fans who... Um, who are starved of trophies. They're desperate for a trophy and the absence of it, you know, it's not good enough. You know, and I always think that the analysis, and it's no disrespect to anyone who's a Tottenham fan who might be watching this, who thinks Levy is the, the devil. But for me, I, I think that the analysis of Daniel Levy's tenure from people that are Levy out, they look very much through the microscope just at Tottenham and they don't consider what else has happened outside of Tottenham Hotspur during the 22, 23 years of his reign. And I think the, the overarching force that has, has been prevalent is the, the money in football, right? In the last 24 years, I think 92% now of all trophies that have been won in the Premier League that could be won, the Premier League um, and, and the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup have been won by the same five teams, right? United, Arsenal, Liverpool, City and Chelsea. And City and Chelsea have dominated that in the last 15 years. And they're the teams that have had sugar daddy ownership that allowed themselves to, you know, I use the analogy of like driving down a motorway. If Tottenham are trying to catch these guys up, these guys have been speeding at 120 miles an hour, right? Before the rules came in to allow themselves to get miles ahead, spending all the money, buying all the best talent, doing everything they've done. The rules are now tightened and they've got such a massive advantage. So if Tottenham, if Tottenham have got to not just do better, but they've got to do better than the improvements and the, and the speed at which the, the teams in front of them are traveling, which is difficult if you've got an owner who's who's only willing to to work within the club's means. But he's done everything he can, and I think that you know he's done brilliantly well with the offside, with the the off the pitch stuff. I think he's made us very competitive financially. He's made a ton of mistakes with some of the hiring of the directors of football over the years. Nobody's perfect, but I think that if he'd won one or two of the trophies that he's got to the final for over the last twenty years. I think that no one would have any complaints. The fact that we lost on penalty shootouts to Manchester United in 2014, I think it was. If that goes a different way on the day, he's matched the same frequency of trophies as any chairman before. He's also finished Tottenham in the highest league position twice since 1961. He's got us to the Champions League final. I think people that are Levy out of that kind of narrative, I think that they, they like to make the argument that everything that's bad at Tottenham is his fault because the buck stops at the top. But I don't think that they are consistent with that argument. They don't, if, if everything that's bad at Tottenham on the field is his fault because the buck stops at the top, then everything that's been good about Tottenham also is down to him. And they don't give that credibility. They'll, they'll, they'll call the Champions League run luck or they'll say it was Pochettino, you know, but they'll, they'll blame him for the fact that we get dumped out of the FA Cup by Sheffield United or Forest. And I think it's inconsistent. For me personally, I think that Daniel Levy's done a good job in mm -hmm. a very difficult set of circumstances, but I just wish that he'd take a little bit more. I think his risk appetite was a little bit different. If he had a little bit more um, ambition and just in moment, key moments. If he just, yeah. If he just spent a little bit more or took a little bit more riskier choices in key moments, I think we would have got a little bit more success, but uh, you know, the opportunity Sean was there after the last season at White Hart Lane. I, I, I went to Tottenham that day. Got out and played. If it weren't for Petr Cech, we'd have lost by four or five. They were, he was so much better than us, you know, clear of us at the time. Mm. And unbeaten, if you remember rightly, in that season, unbeaten at home the whole season. That season, then the next season is going to Wembley. If, if Levy would have chucked some money at that, that, at that time, uh, I, I think Spurs could have could have gone on and won things. I thought that was an absolutely outstanding football team. But yeah, I don't didn't. disagree with you. The problem is, I think that, again, putting the kind of financial hat on for a second, I think that a lot of Tottenham fans hold him uh, hold him guilty as charged because 
when we did move into the new stadium in that Wembley thing, we went two windows without buying a player. But you guys went through the same. Yes, we've done it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It took you eight years to lift the trophy after you moved to the Emirates. I think that there are consequences to making those investments, right? You, you're putting everything, yeah. all your eggs into a new stadium. Couldn't basket. agree more. Couldn't agree so, more. Unfortunately, the timing of moving into the stadium happened to be at the exact same time as you get to a Champions League final. I often say getting to the Champions League final was the worst thing that could have happened to Tottenham because it reset expectations with the fan base mm. to be like, okay, now we need to go on and kick on and do more just at the time when we couldn't afford it. And so, but that from a Daniel Levy's perspective, he was then, he had his hands tied behind his back, couldn't do things that would have taken us to the next level, you know, and, and you know, the rest is history, but it's just timing, isn't I, it? I think, we've, um, I think you're right in what you're saying. The difference between Tottenham and Arsenal for that, and, and, and credit again to Levy for this, is that where Arsenal had to sell players, Dan, didn't we? We were selling a player every every se every every season, you know, whether yeah, man. by your... Van Persie, uh, Fabregas or whatever. Tottenham kept that group together. They didn't sell no one. They kept all of those players. Kept Kane there. You know, they kept Harry Kane in his prime till he was 30 years of age and then he got 100 million for it. Yeah, we, yeah. we couldn't do that. We had to sell players. And um, I think from... I look at Tottenham and I'll be really honest with you, like their, their expectations have never been dampened, even with what's going on now and everything like that. Where our... Our expectations, because we was like in for that time for the title, and then we sort of went down into top four, and we sort of like accepted that a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, like you know, we, we didn't really get toxic with Arsenal until we didn't get in the top four. Dan, did you think that? Like, you know, but yeah, we, started, like, we 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 accept we we we're sort of like being brainwashed, if you know what I mean. Like, oh, yeah, top yeah. four is acceptable. Top four is acceptable. Ridiculous. And then, and then, like, yeah, 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 I, I get what you're saying. I agree with it, like, you know. And um, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, Sean. Like, you know, you get to a Champions League final, look, look, and it, you want more, don't you? Like, you know what I mean? You, you get to yeah, a yeah. final, you want more. You get to, to second in the league, unbeaten at home, you want more. You know, that's how it, yeah, that's yeah. How it is, you know. And I think, like, sometimes um, your success can be your, um, not your failure, but, you, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Your own yeah. downfall. The success can be your own downfall. Yeah, a little, a little bit like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because you, you want these expectations, you know, and uh, certainly when we was at Arsenal, you know, when, I, when we first, do you remember when we first went to the um, Emirates? I thought we was going to win the league still, like, do you know what I mean? And then like, <laughs> yeah. you realise it ain't going to happen and all of a sudden you, your expectations, well, 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 I'll be in the top four. I think Arsenal Finger done that very, very well, you know, that, that Harry brainwashed the Arsenal fans to, 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 to accept top four to a certain degree. Now, now Arsenal fans are not, you know, even like a couple of years ago, do you know when we, 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 we lost out to you for top four? Our Arsenal fans at the time, a lot of them, Dan, not, not, not all of them, were saying, oh, yeah, it's, it's just, that's, that's progress. That's, that's you know, I mean, we, we'll accept that. Crazy. It's it next year. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, so there's all, we've been sort but of that's the younger that. fan base, Lee. That is the younger <laughs> fan base that grew up with Wenger, who told them everyone that top four is a trophy. So now with those 14 year olds that are now 24 now think fourth. Well, I've asked for done well. We got fourth. Like, no, nah, yeah. man, that ain't what I grew up but on. Over, you know what I'm but, but over, sorry, because you know, I, I am older than 24, but over what though? Because for me, I'm not being funny. I'm sorry all for being late. I said it the other day, Dan. We, we talked about this the other day, and big up to my brother Sean in the building. How you doing, Dad? Good to see you, mate. The shift hasn't. The shift is not the fans' fault. The shift is the club's fault, and the competition's fault. Why? When Champions League was just one team, the champions going in to play European football, that's what it should be. But as soon as they expanded it, they expanded the Champions League for money. Let's be real, and then the Champions League positioning has become more valuable than winning the domestic cup. That's the truth. If you win the FA Cup, you get about 5 mil. If you qualify for the Champions League, you get about 40 mil. So that's the reason why we live in a capitalist um, society, world or whatever, and money dictates the game. We've seen that. Money is what's flooded the game, and that's why the Premier League is the best league in the world. So for me, finishing top four is not a trophy. But playing Champions League football means that we can attract better players. And I asked the question, Lee and Sean and Dan, if you were to win the FA Cup and finish out the top four, 
or get into the top four, which ones are like which ones likely to attract better players? Finishing the Champions League or winning the FA Cup? It, listen, I, I think it's a great top question. It's, it's it's a great. I would take a, a trophy question. any day, but if you want players, top four, yeah, yeah. exactly. I would take a trophy because it's a great day out. But look, you know, um, a few few seasons ago, we won the FA Cup and come fifth, didn't we? You know, um, and even though we won the FA Cup, it, there was a slight disappointment that we weren't going to be in the Champions League for the first time in so many years, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, now, being in the chat, we, uh, we haven't been in the Champions League for a few years where you guys have for, been. Once you're in the Champions League, like we are now, it is an unbel- when that knockout stage comes, it is an unbelievable experience for a fan or the players or whatever. Like now, those players at Arsenal now are experiencing going to go to Bayern Munich if they win that, possibly Real Madrid or Man City. I think at the end of the day, they're probably looking at it and thinking, do you know what? I prefer nights like this to one night of the FA, one day of the FA Cup. Yeah, hundred percent. It's I mad. It, it is yeah. mad. It is mad. But I mean, like, look, we've we've heard from Sean, got a sensible Tottenham fan. I wanted to bring a sensible Tottenham fan on. Unfortunately, Henry and Turbs weren't available. <laughs> so I found Deji. Deji's coming on now in place. So big up my bro. Um listen, uh talking about Daniel Levy and Spurs and where they go from here. You're a big fan of what's happening at Spurs. Well, I think you are anyway. You seem to be quite happy with what's going on. And Sean's sort of, uh, kind of, well, I think Sean likes what's going on as well in terms of Le- Levy and Ange Postacoglu. Now, we spoke about Fulham and we spoke about Fulham last night on mine, so we're not going to go into death for that, right? Yeah. But at the start of the season, this is real talk now, you'd have taken uh, you'd have taken fourth or fifth if you got your Champions League. So can Tottenham actually have a bad season here? Because I think that's where you're going to finish. Well, you're going to finish fourth or fifth. Yeah, so, and, and I'm glad you said that because when I, if we Spurs fans say it, that we get bantered, we get told we're delusional, we get told that we're not ambition, we've got no ambition for the club. Tottenham is in a win-win because we we it was so disastrous on that Conte last season that I said anything, I said even finishing eighth but playing better football would have been acceptable. It was that poor. So for me, I'm looking at my club, I'm looking at Tottenham Hotspur in the potential to get Champions League football. And I'm saying, that's brilliant. People saying, but you said that um, the, your Tottenham's 11 can go toe-to-toe with Arsenal, so why aren't you winning the league this year? And I was like, well, give us a chance. Poster Coglu's only been in charge five minutes. If he finishes top four with Champions League football, even if he finishes with Europa League football, that is progress. And he needs time to let the work that he's doing with our club, it needs time to cook. So, yes, Tottenham getting Champions League football is probably... If we're being real, he overachieved because I know I was critical of Poster Cogler. I'll come out, I was like, Well, Scottish League, Japanese League, Australian League, what's he going to be able to do in the Prem? I wasn't expecting anything, and he's come and he's surpassed expectation. And now the goalpost has shifted. I expect Spurs to get Champions League football, but even if we don't, I will not be disappointed because. We are playing a better brand of football and we can see the beginnings of the work that he's doing with our club. You would be, though. You would be. So we can't You would be. You would be. If you didn't get Champions League, you'd be disappointed. You would. It'd be a shame, but it's not enough for me to start effing and blinding and saying, Mr. Cogman's not the right man for the job. No, it's not not that at all. Um, For me, it's a rebuild season. It's a season for him to test and learn. He's testing and learning the squad. And we can see that he has an idea and given the right players that he can kick on. And people keep criticising Daniel Levy. Yes, we can. But he also has an argument. We had COVID. We had bloody, um, we had the stadium to build. I said this summer is the summer where we got to see if Daniel Levy backs the man or not. If he doesn't back him, then we want him out. If he backs him, and I'm not saying 100 million on a Declan Rice, what I am saying is if he, if he sees a player like a Neto, if he sees Ivan Tony and Postacoglu wants those players, if he does, then we should be going and getting him. If he does that, then what Spurs fan can complain about Levy? Why are we complaining if he's if he's spending the money and bringing in what the manager wants? So for me, yeah, Spurs is in a win-win. And um, yeah, the future's bright. 
<laughs> Listen, we're going to come back to Spurs in a, in, a, in a minute. Judge, let's talk about this Saka business. Mm. Is Mikel Arteta turning into learning off of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson here? Because I watched, I watched this morning. I don't know if you did. I always watch the overlap with, uh, not the overlap. It's just fo- football. Whether it's got with Roy Keane, right? Ian, Jill Scott, and Gary Neville. And I watched it. And Gary Neville said, when we used to go to the March Internationals, Sir Alex Ferguson used to say, right, there's seven of you. You three are going. You four are injured. All right, cool. And that was it. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> that wow. March one. He used to say, and I think, wow, that is mad. Is that happening here with with Gabriel and Bukayo Saka, or are they both injured? No, no listen, look, Saka's obviously picked up some sort of injury, and I, I think that um, I don't think it's too serious. But they're, they're obviously looking to play him on the the weekend against Brazil, and then um, it probably would have been rested for that game there. But then I think that they've realised that it's too much of a risk. You know, it's probably like best to just get back in there. Why he stayed there for so long? Tells you that um, it is a bit of a worry for me. Like you know, what I mean, if it um, well, not a worry. I think like it, it must have been like that they was looking to get him to play at the weekend, and obviously like they've realised that he can't. So an extra three or four days is going to be beneficial. So I would imagine that the Gabriel one. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like there's a big thing about Brazilian players playing for Brazil, and. Uh, um, he's not like nailed on to play for Brazil. I know he's in the squad every game at this moment in time, but he's not nailed on like um, certain players are to, to play. So I think he would have liked to play, particularly in England, particularly in that England game. So I, I do think if he was fit, he would have probably played in that game. But, you know, if you've got a knock, you've got a knock. And um, the good thing about these games that they are friendlies, it's not the, the being and end all, like, you know. So listen, for Saka... Smith, uh, sorry, Saka, Rice. They're, they're going to, um, they're going to play they're in the in in the Euros. They're going to be in the in the Euro squad, whether they whether they play like week in week out or not. At the end of the day, they're in the squad, guaranteed. Um, so I don't think it's such a worry for for the likes of them. But for certain other players, there 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 is. You know what I mean? Um, the likes of uh, Watkins, you know, even Foden to a certain extent, I think will be guaranteed game. But they, they are actually saying what I, I did say on the other day that uh, someone like Madison could miss out because they've got so many attacking players and all that, like, you know, and you think, well, that I don't see that. Or Grealish could miss out. Um, right, so so there, there's, there's certain players have got to play for, for, um, 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 and have games. But... I like it in one respect that they're not playing. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be pissed off if De- Declan Rice is playing Tuesday. I, don't, I expect him to play against Brazil, but I don't expect if he's playing on Tuesday, I'll be fuming. And I want no, no. The only two players I want to be see playing Tuesday are the two players that have got to play, which is Kivir and Shinchenko. I don't want to see them in other friendlies, but you know, use it accordingly to 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 other teams. You know what I mean? Like Spurs haven't got that many midweek games coming up because they're in Europe. Play the Madisons and and, and 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 cement their places in the team, or other or other team like Chelsea or whatever players that you know, like Cole Palmer, and needs to play a few international games. Where we know what Foden can do, we know what Saka can do, we know what those sort of guys can do. The Liverpool players and and, and that. You know like, what Madison can do as well. You know what I mean. You know what Madison yeah, look, look, listen, look, 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 listen. I think Madison's good enough to be to be in the England squad without a doubt. But what I'm saying is, he's not. There are there is talk about maybe leaving him out. Like, uh, uh, it'd be ridiculous if they do. You know what I mean? Because he's a player that can play. I think Madison would get into my first England eleven. Two wide player. Yeah, I, like, I, w- I wouldn't argue with that. Um, you know, there's a call for that. But you've got to understand with his manager, he leaves out Foden's and Grealish's and and people like that and plays um, other players. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? When you look at it. At this moment, and saying the squad, this this squad is so in in balance, it's unreal. Like five midfield players and thirty three players playing up front. You know what I mean? Like he's got to, he's got to lose a few from from that. Like you know, so it'd be really interesting what what he does, what his front f- first three are. I I think at the end of the day, I wouldn't be surprised if Grealish doesn't go on this one. I wouldn't be surprised. You know what yeah, I mean? Played for ages, is he? No, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he, if he didn't didn't get in there. When you think about it, Foden's really coming on now. Cole Palmer's coming on like leaps yeah, and bounds at the moment. Like you know, they dropped a clanger there, didn't they? Pep Guardiola's dropped a clanger there. 
They've yes. replaced him with bloody what's his name, Doku, who looks like yeah. Summer Triore. Yeah. He just runs at people who don't have no output whatsoever. So I'm like Cole Palmer, I'm like, surely they should have kept him. That is mad. But I'm not saying that. Maybe he wouldn't have been like he is now because he's been sat on the bench the whole time and you wouldn't know what he was like. But that is a player there, mate. I tell you, he's a good player, I think. A uh, brilliant player. Like, you know, like Raheem Sterling now is like no way coming back. He's too far off off of it. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. It's just hope that, you know, from our point of view, like, I'll be pissed off if, you know, there's no Saka, no Gabriel when we're playing Man City again. Like, you know, if, if we're going to beat Man City, we've got to have everybody fit. Yeah, and, you know, everybody fit. Like, I'm fed up with playing them. They're better than us anyway. Over the, you know, like the last time we played them, we beat them. No Saka, no, no uh, Martinelli. You know, what I mean, like I know that they didn't have Rodri that day, but like, you know, come on, we need to go to the City with all our best players. And if we haven't, I, I want Saka all their players fit. I want all, all our players fit and all their players. Yeah, fit. I want, I want yeah, exactly, exactly. I want all this. Oh, we didn't have so and so, and you didn't have so and so. Like. You want to see the best players, man. Like, it's it, mad. Happens. it always happens against them, Dan. Like, you know, I mean, I'll be, you know, I'll be, you know, like, we don't know what's happening with Saka. No one knows. But listen, if he was really badly injured, he wouldn't be going on that. He wouldn't be on that on that trip in the first place. You know what I mean? Maybe okay. the Gabriel one's a little bit more serious because he got pulled out a little bit earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Sean, is he injured? Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest. I don't think he is. I think he might he might have uh, similar to maybe what we saw at the start of the season when he had maybe a little bit of tightness, a little bit of cramp or something, and then it was any excuse to to pull out sort of thing. I think maybe there's some truth to it. It's not a complete fabrication, but um, zero risk tolerance kind of thing from from the manager. If any any opportunity to come home, please do. Kind of was the message probably I would say. Yeah, man, Dej. Sean, Sean's a little bit too nice tonight, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a bit of a classic case of um, Ars- uh, Arsenal players putting club um, uh, above country. I, I get what Lee is saying. I totally get it. It is um, a friendly and maybe it's not so important. But when your country calls you, you need to step up and represent. And the fact that two Arsenal players have pulled out of international duty. The thing is, mate, I've been, I've been saying it all week. What's going on with the Arsenal players and I don't blame them. It's the classic, it's that movie in it. I know what you did last summer. And that's really, really bothering them. It's just, it's literally <laughs> chewing them. A lot of them aren't able to sleep at night. That which is that they don't, they don't want to be, they don't want to be seen as potentially bottling it. Now, I don't think yeah. Arsenal bottled it last season. I think they were unfortunate by a number of things, and that's injuries. Now, Saka is keeping himself fit for the Man City game. Gabriel's keeping himself fit for the Man City game, so that Arsenal have no excuses, just like you said, so that they have the full the full Monty available at their disposal to, to, to bring the trophy home. That's what I think the Arsenal players are doing. And actually, if I if it was if the shoe was on the other foot and Son had the opportunity to stay back and Harry Kane, I wouldn't want Kane to be playing this weekend and I wouldn't want Son to go away and play. But because of who they are, if the country comes calling, they will always play. Unfortunately, this... Bit this like away this year. Has he gone away? Is, it, is he on international duty? Yeah. He, he, he is. Kane. Sonny. Kane. Sonny, Sonny, yeah, yeah. He's gone. He scored. He scored. Didn't he score yesterday or today? Yeah, he scored yesterday, but they couldn't beat Thailand, I think they played. But uh, oh, yeah. I'm, 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 the, the different thing is Richarlison, right? He comes out. I think he forgets. <laughs> He's talking to Portuguese media, and with the the benefit of the internet, we can get a transcription on what he's saying. And he basically came out yesterday and said, "Yeah, it's always cl- it's always country first for me. Always Brazil above club." I was like, "Mate, you are starting to piss me off. You yeah. like for, you're forgetting who paying your wages, my man. Like, have some respect for the club that is that is, that is that, like me. I'm, I'm you know, every every season ticket holder is paying his wages, and he turns around and says, "No, I'm Brazil. Always Brazil first. Hey, look at the tattoos on his back, Sean. And he got R nine and and Pele, and then him. Yeah, <laughs> a bit weird, isn't it? Strange. It is awful, mate. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. But there we go. Um, listen, it's uh, I I actually agree with Deji. I actually do. I think Sack is. I think Arteta said to him, "You feel anything, you get on." And I think he's, oh, yeah, I felt saying, Gareth, I better get out of here. I'm not so sure that he has, if I'm honest. Likewise, Gabriel, he's probably felt saying, and thought, I'm just going to go back now. I'll, I will be amazed if they both, uh, oh, 
Jacob says it's Neymar R9 and himself, not Pele. Uh, yeah, big up, man, big up. Um, I'll be amazed if Saka and Gabriel are injured. I really will, Lee. I'll be amazed if we don't both play at City. I know that it's like only next week or whatever when you think of it like that. It's a few days away, but I think personally we will be fine. I'll be stunned if they are. And wouldn't surprise if there's a few others in the City side that come back now. Wouldn't surprise if tomorrow if Foden feels saying KDB apparently is not <laughs> travelling. You know what I mean? Honestly, this, this is the thing. This is a massive game. The domino like, effect. Yeah, man. Domino effect. But imagine, Sean, right? You're going for a Premier League title. This is the biggest game in a long, long time that they've had all season. And you're going to play in a Belgium and you feel your, your hamstring go twang. Oh, that's yeah. me done for that game. You're going to be like, well, at least I've got to run out of my country against Belgium for 10 minutes. Or are you going to go, actually, I wish I would have stayed at home, got some treatment, and then I'd be ready for the game. And I understand it. I think it's Personally, I think it's a madness having these bloody pointless international friendlies in the free quarter of a way of a season when people are trying to stay up, people are trying to not to drop points deductions so they can stay in the league, people are trying mm. to get top four European places and, and go for a title. And now we've got to go and play Brazil and Belgium pointlessly. Why? Yeah, it's pointless. But the only thing I will say, sorry, quickly, is that... Yeah. Even friendlies carry points. So when you're looking at um, uh, international uh, rankings, if you beat a Brazil and you beat a Belgium, you know, our FIFA ranking would shoot up. We'd probably be top two, top three FIFA ranking. So see it as a friendly, but also see it as an opportunity to, to move up on the FIFA rankings. And I don't know about you, but I quite like it when we're in the top three FIFA rankings, saying that we're one of the best three teams in the world. I prefer that than having England being 10th. Yeah. He's he strange, he strange, like, the mentality of it all, because, like, Harry Kane, um, you know, has twisted his ankle and all that, like, you know, um, and he's having a good season. In, but he's guaranteed to be, like, you know, his captain. So he's guaranteed starting in, in the Euros. Why is he there? Right. Uh, you know, and so, like, that as well, yeah. Hundred percent. If, if you're if, if you're if you know you're a guaranteed player, you do, you really don't have anything to show. If you if the boot was on the other, if it was a James Madison, let's say Tottenham were in the title race and we had Man City next weekend, and it was James Madison and James Madison was fighting for his England place for the Euros, and he had to make that decision around whether or not to to go full you know full on for the England friendlies because he's trying to prove his point to go Southgate, but at the same time risk his health for the Man City game. And I think that would be an interesting dilemma. But for people like Saka and people like Declan Rice, you know that they're going to be in the squad and you know that they're going to be starting. Yeah. So why, there's no need for them to be there. What have they got to prove? You know? Yeah. Mm. I, I do find that a little bit strange. You know, unless, like, I wouldn't be so surprised if Harry Kane don't play in these games, but they've said, look, you know, go over there, get the treatment and you're sort of learning the tactics of how you're going to play in in, in the Euros and not, but you know, be a part of it and whatever. Maybe maybe that's what they're, they're doing, and they've probably said to him that he's not going to start the two games. It's still he's still going to get good treatment in England, uh, uh, you know. So, you know, and and the thing is with the Gabriel one, they, I've got to say Brazil were traveling uh, training at, at Arsenal's training ground, don't they? Like they can't like you know run on one pitch and like, all the Brazilians are training. And all of a sudden, oh, right, Gabby, how you doing? As he's as he's training on the other pitch, you know what I mean? Like so, I think it's gonna. You yeah. know, I do think he's generally got. They've got knocks. They've got knocks that need a little bit of rest. But I'm with you. If, if Arsenal had a game this weekend, I'd imagine that they would be patched up and and, and ready to go. That you know, maybe that. Yeah, man, absolutely. Listen, before we come to a close, I've got one last question. I want to ask you, because uh, someone asked me yesterday about this, uh, what you would pick as your Lingdon 11 if everyone is fit? Sean, I'll start with you. Like, we'll go from keeper right the way through. What would your 11 be? And this is at the Euros, by the way, if everyone's fit. This isn't for the Brazil oh, game. The first game. Yeah, yeah, first game. Oh. You, you, you go for the Euros. We don't, Obviously, we don't know who's fit and all that, but this is if everyone's fit. Who would you not Southgate. <laughs> yeah. Who would you pick in your in your one to eleven? I'll ask Deji and, and judges afterwards as well. Yeah. God, you know what? I've not even thought about this. I'm not a massive international football fan, but I'll go Pickford, um Kyle Walker, Stones, Maguire, Tamori probably, something like that. Something a bit more pace. Um left back would be 
Who's, who's the normal left back for England? Shaw or Chilwell. Shaw. Oh, but yeah, put Luke Shaw in there. Rice. Um, Madison. And Harry Kane up front. Saka on the right. I would go with Foden on the left. And the other midfielder, I would go for... I think I'm forgetting a big name player here. Bellingham. Think... Bellingham, of course. Bellingham. That's it. Yeah. That's my 11. That is very similar to mine. Uh, Dej? Yeah, for me, um, I would go with Pope and Go. I don't, I've never liked Pickford. I think he's, I don't know how he's number one for England. And if he's number one for us uh, this summer, then we deserve to to go out in the, in the, in the group stage. Uh, Trent will be on the right for me. Centre backs would be Stones and Tomori, or Stones and Guy, the Crystal Palace lad. I think he's a fantastic player. And actually, Tomori can play left back. You know, he played left back for AC Milan against Spurs in the Champions League. And he did a job on Kane, actually. He completely nullified Kane the whole game. So I would go Tomori. I don't like uh, Chilwell enough, unfortunately. And I don't like um, Shaw enough. Midfield, Declan Rice, obviously. I would go with Jude Bellingham as well to play alongside Declan. Like this kind of defensive thing that he does with two of similar players in Calvin Phillips and, and Declan Rice doesn't make sense to me. I think we can afford to have a Declan and then have a bit more flair in Jude Bellingham. Then I would have Madders in the number 10. I would have Saka on the left. No, Saka on the right. I'd have Bolden on the left. And obviously the greatest striker in world football at the moment, Harry Kane up top. Interesting. Did you say it left back? Out? I broke out where I was. Tomori. I think oh. Tomori can do a job there. Yeah. I mean, Luke Shaw and, and Chilwell, I, I just don't feel that there's enough pace. I think there's enough yeah. pace. Yeah. Listen, I, I mean, God, Lee, I'll let you go. Who would you have? Well, right? I'll tell you what, I'm struggling on the left back. I'm, I am v v massively struggling on the left back, like, you know. I'm going Ramsdale in goal. Um, Trent at right back. I'm going Stones. I'm going Braithwaite at central defence. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm going for him. Wow. Uh, and maybe get <laughs> some, someone like a, a, a guy, a guy um, Gay, um, Crystal Palace as left back. I, 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 I've gone Shaw, but he's just never fit Shaw, like, you know what I mean, if I'll be honest. So a, a real, real tough one for me there. You're not going to like my midfield, you Spurs guys. I've gone <laughs> Rice, uh, Bellingham, and I've gone Foden in there. All right. Okay. Um, and, and up front, I've gone Saka, um, Kane, and Rashford. I've gone for Rashford in there, but I wouldn't be against putting um, uh, Foden out there and bringing in Madison into that position. Like you know, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be a, a, a thing that. But I, I feel that Foden. I just think it's got to be. He's got to be in the team somewhere. Somewhere, and I think Rashford will always does it for for England. Like you know, so. Uh, and it, that's a good beef you just put on there. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do what you've done there. I'm gonna put Carl Walker at left back, right back, playing left back, like right? you know what I mean. I think he's yeah, a better yeah. option, case, yeah, than than, yeah. than 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 Shaw. So that's I, I'd play Walker there, like you know. They've done it with Trippier, so why then why not do it with Walker, like you know what I mean? It's so, interesting, man. Uh, Go on, Dad. Go on quickly. Go on. No, I was gonna say the only reason why I've gone Madders with Kane is because I is maybe wishful thinking I would have loved to have seen Madders and Kane together at Spurs but actually on form in the number 10 now having listened to to you guys actually I would have Foden Foden's scored some goals and been quite effective for City in that number 10 role you can play Madison that out wide yeah and then play you could you could have, I, I would have you could have Rashford or you could have Sterling you know because you know there is something about Sterling does perform when he plays for England do you know what I mean mm. like and, and maybe because I I don't know if it's because, uh, Lee, you've gone for Rashford because internationally he does also perform for England. Yeah, I, I just, I just feel for... that, yeah, I, I've gone that, like, you know, I, I, I'm a big, I'm a big Greenish fan as well, but he's not in it like, because of but that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't object if, if you said to me, like, right, Foden's going to play on the left and Madison's going to play down the middle, I wouldn't be objective to that, like, but, but if, if you're going to leave Foden out and play Rashford, you've got to get Foden in somewhere along the line and playing him. Do you imagine him playing, and, and Madison, if I'll be honest, in front of them two? You know what I mean? Declan Rice and Bellingham, like, my God, you're going to have the freedom to do whatever you want. And I think, yeah. that, you know, like, 
they could share the role or whatever, like, you know, um, for he's, me. He's got options, man. He's got options. Listen, I would Imagine. go um, Pickford in goal because Ramsdale and Pope ain't played. So I'd have to go with him. I don't really like him either, but they ain't played. Uh, my back four would be Trent. I think Kyle Walker's been done way too many times this year. He looks like a decline of a footballer, in my opinion. Um, it will be Stones and Maguire, but I would go with Stones and probably Brantthwaite on form. I think he looks a proper centre-half, mate. Left back for me would be a completely different one that no one said. Joe Gomez. I think he's coming at Liverpool and been fantastic. Good shout. Good shout. So for me, it'd be Joe Gomez. And then in midfield, I'd have Rice, Bellingham, Madison. And in my front three would be Foden left, Saka right and Kane up top. That's what I would do right now, looking at things. Because I just don't think he can put the players. I know what it'll be. He'll put Maguire in there. He'll put Shaw at left back. Henderson. Henderson in there with, with Rice making sure it's a double pivot, keep it calm, all that crap. It's going to be <laughs> rubbish. It is, honestly. But there we go. Do we, have, do we have the strongest 11? Which is, if, there's an, if there's another national team out there with a stronger 11, who is it? France. Probably France. Really? But France. At the moment, uh, England not or France. 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 Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. I mean, I don't What's think they've got Harry Kane, bad, have they? It's not bad. They've it's got not bad. Mbappe. They've got Mbappe, mate. <laughs> they've got yeah, Mbappe. But that's the thing, like, they've got they've got Mbappe, who's brilliant. But behind that, they've got Giroud, right? Um, I'm not knocking Giroud. He's 37 year, years of age. If anything happens to Kane, we've got Tony. If we ain't got Tony, we've got, we've got um, Watkins. Watkins. You know, we've got Rashford. To come. We have got... We, our back so much down, like we get into most team. national teams. Most yes. national teams. Yeah. Dan, just before I wrap up, I just want to ask one quick question because I heard it the other day. I think oh, you man. might have thrown the question. So th- th- the thing was, people were criticising Gareth South- Southgate for the job he's done in the England team so far. They're saying with the talent that he's had at his disposal, we should have won a European Championship or the World Cup by now. Yeah. I would say that I think he's done a good job with the talent. I mean, to get us to a final. Remember, we used to get beat by Norway. Yeah, we used to get slapped up by Holland on the regular. Now we're finding ourselves in semi-finals of, of international competitions. We're finding ourselves in finals. Oh, can we could we confidently confidently say that Southgate has actually done a, a decent job with the talent at his disposal? Or do you think actually with that sort with the talent he's had, he should have done more? But I'm just oh, thinking, I think in game management and tactically he's let us down. That's what I think. In-game management, 1-0 up in the final with Italy. Shit, shit your pants and sit back and just wait. Oh, now we're out. Against Croatia, we go exactly the same thing. 1-0. Now let's sit back and let's try and hold it out 1-0. Then it goes 1-1. Then it goes extra time and we get dumped out 2-1. We've not got that. He ain't got that extra, like, go and do it extra. He really is defensive and negative-minded, in my opinion. Some people like that because it can get you through 2-1s, 1-0s in times, and we have done that as well. But he's also had a very... I know you've got to only compete the teams in front of you, but we've had some nice draws, haven't we? We've had some pretty much a bye yeah. to the final in some of them. So, I don't know. Every time we come up against a team like France or Italy, we've shit the bed. And yeah. I don't know that a Carlo Ancelotti or a Jose Mourinho either, like that type manager, I would have done that. But that's just me. A lot of people like what he's done. Totally agree. I'm with you on that, Dan. I think we'd have, we'd have got to those um, finals with that, with that, despite... I think we he's cost us. And I say, like, even the game against France, France were there for the beating, like, and we just didn't do it. Um, <laughs> a couple of his decisions have, have been, have let us down. Um, and I, I just think under with better manager, with a little bit more, not experience now, I, I, with a little bit more get up and go. I think England have played with the handbrake on at times. Like, I, and I feel that if he, if he was to just let these players play, we would we would do it like you know what I mean. If he doesn't win it this season, if we do not win it this season, it'd be down to him, not the players. That's my opinion. I think we, we're far better than anybody else in there, like you know what I mean. You we're we're, we're having a conversation at the moment. Who are you going to play, Foden or or um, you know, oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are really like do you know what I mean, Madison or Foden. Are you play, who are you playing up front, Saka or uh, you know, there's not just Saka. You've got. Cole Palmer in it. He's got so many talented players. Come mm. on. Let, mm. let them go out there and play. And, and and I'll tell you what, guys, if he does play a midfield, I'm not saying that he shouldn't. But like that midfield starts. I'm not saying he shouldn't finish with a Henderson or, or someone to see out games. But if you're starting a game with um a Phillips, who I know is not in the squad at the moment, or or somebody like that, 
Yeah, you're two right. Two holding midfield players when when one will do. Um, I'm not so sure. Like you know, I don't mind finishing games. You know, if you you know you get one nil up, two nil up, and then bring on those sort of guys to fi- to finish the job. But come on, like go go with your best team and go and bloody go for it. A little bit like what Tottenham are doing, like you know what I mean, like you know, bit of 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 England. Maybe, maybe he should get the job. <laughs> maybe, maybe not yet. Uh, not yet. <laughs> uh, listen to to close really quickly. Um, I'm not going to get involved with this because me and Dej had it out last night with it. But you know, Dej has kind of calculated and got his calculator <laughs> out about you know how how Tottenham can still finish above Arsenal. And I just wanted Lee to hear it. That's all. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. So Deji, you know, you're confident still. So uh, crack on, my bro. The mic is yours. Lee would love to hear it. Okay, I'm looking at Sean as well because if Sean starts to turn off his camera, then I know I'm doing a really good <laughs> job. So. No, no, no I'll just, just laugh. I'll just laugh anyway, mate. Don't worry about no, it. No, it is. Lee, Lee is someone who, who who loves the game, and you know I made a reference to a movie called uh, "I Know What You Did Last Summer," and there's something about Arsenal and Easter eggs. I don't know what it is, but there's some sort of positive correlation between Arsenal and Easter eggs. So what what I said is this. Before the news of Gabriel, before the news of Saka, all pulling out of international duty because they want to save themselves for the City game. I said, in the run, for the end of this season, I can still see Arsenal losing three games. I think going to the Etihad, I think Arsenal could lose that game. There's a strong possibility you can. I know you did them over at your ground, but I think you would agree. I agree, yeah. Right. I also think. The North, London, the North London derby is a dodgy game for Arsenal. We Tottenham could be in a rele- relegation dogfight. You know that on any given Sunday, if you don't turn up, you could get beat by Spurs. And especially under this manager and what we did at your gaff, that's another banana skin for Arsenal. So that's already two games. Yeah? Yep. Yep. So Lee's in agreement with my first two. And I think there is a third in there. I'm sorry, because Arsenal do things in threes. That could be a Brighton, that could be a Villa where Arsenal disappoint us. Two seasons ago, I called it, yeah, with my brother Sean. I said that Arsenal could lose against Southampton, Crystal Palace and I think it was Brighton. Yeah, and lo and behold, Arsenal did exactly that. And you haven't done that so far this year, but every year you guarantee us a free match losing streak. And so I'm just waiting for that. So, And I said, if Arsenal lose... The three games and Spurs kick on, then it's all to play for. Yeah, but hang on. But that's nine we've points. Got, we've, 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 we've got, we've got, we've got 11 points behind, point. BG. Yeah, we've got 11 points behind. Say that again, I'm sorry. They, they need to lose four games. Yeah. yeah. Look, 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 look. You're 11 I'm points not, behind. I'm not here to completely rubbish Arsenal. But uh, Gunnar Lee did the match yesterday. He said Arsenal in the last nine games last season... They won three, drew three, lost three. Just saying, if you'd equaled that sort of performance and Spurs go on a bit of a run, a bit of a run, an, it would be an interesting <laughs> end of the season. A bit of a run, did you like? A bit of a run, like you've got to win every single game and Arsenal got to lose four games. That is a bit including of a run. Away yeah. Anfield, including <laughs> away at Anfield. Including away at Anfield. Which I, did, which did you last you said be on. I, I want you to elaborate on a bit of a run. What is what is a bit of a run? <laughs> right. So I worked out something in the Fulham game, um, which I, I, I understand is an issue with Spurs that we've got to deal with. We've got to deal with this mentality when we play lesser teams in our heads. I'm not saying they are lesser teams, but Spurs have a bit of a block there when we play teams that we don't respect. People look at Spurs running at the end of the season and they say Newcastle, Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City. Cool, blimey, that's a really hard running. I'm saying, no, it's not. We've already drawn with City. We've already drawn to Arsenal. We've already beaten Liverpool this season. We've already beaten Newcastle this season. In fact, I would go as far as to say to you that Spurs prefer the big games. That's when we perform better. We've actually been pretty I agree shit. with that. I, I, less, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. So what you're yeah. saying is that Arsenal that have beaten all these teams and unfair, are going to lose three games. And Spurs, who've got a worse record than Arsenal, are going to win every single game. Is that, 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 that mentality is not right. You're going to lose what, what, somewhere along the line, surely. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we lost on the weekend to Fulham, and and you know, <laughs> and I did and I did say that could be it. But um, what, oh, what, what, what I am saying right only is that right if right Arsenal right. do what I think they can do, then it's within <laughs> Arsenal's gift to lose three games before the end of the season, honestly. And then it gets interesting. I'm not saying. Interesting. Yes. I think it will be interesting. interesting, did you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you will. I, I think if you lose to City, it's <laughs> we could. Uh, you know, you know. I don't want to speak bad because you guys have played well this oh, season. Honestly, I love, I love your feeling. You've end. got to look more at Man United than Arsenal. What's coming up your rear? That's what you've got to worry about. Always worry what's coming up your rear, DG. Like, be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, like, I'm yeah. not being funny. I mean, Man United is as dusty as Tutankhamun's Carmoon's coffin. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're <laughs> truly dusty. So I'm not even worried. <laughs> but well, that's all I said. I did the match and I said it could be an interesting end. However, you know, all will be revealed. I love it. You know, I was on board with. I was on board with you. If we'd gone and done Fulham, if we'd beaten yeah. Fulham. Right. Well, you had your you calculator know, out on this one. And yeah, sure, had his calculator out a weeks no, ago. Really. Like he was in the, the Digi Street. He was in, his, he was in it. He was in the calculator. Mold. I did. It, I was saying this last. This is how the last week's show started. I was like, listen, you know, I've been crunching some numbers, and it's not yeah. not beyond the rails. But it required us to beat Fulham because then it's eight point gap. Then we play again before you play City. Then it could be a five-point gap. <laughs> and you, if you lose to City, and then you've got to come to us, it's a two-point gap, a little slip here or there. But as soon as you lost to Fulham, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no chance. Sorry, Deji. Well, I'm, I'm, listen, I can't, I can't share your uh, your delusions on this one. <laughs> all right, it's all right. Listen, if there's anybody anybody out there that wants to join the calculator club, then Sean and Deji can be found <laughs> on social media, sports first sports show, and <laughs> keep Deji crunching, well. lads. Keep crunching. <laughs> I love it, man. Listen, it's been a wicked show, man. It really has. Uh, make sure you do me a favor. Make sure you go follow Sean. You can follow Sean at Sean. Spurs talk show for Tottenham stuff or Sean Butler TV for non uh, non Tottenham football stuff. Absolutely, make sure you go do that, please, people. Deji, likewise, how could people get hold of you, brother? Yeah, Deji Spurs on YouTube uh, and Instagram and TikTok. Um, yeah, pleasure. Thank you. No, always. Appreciate you having me, guys. Absolutely, man. It's always great. We might have Henry back next week if he's moved out or if he's moved in. Uh, we'll have to sort out what's going on next week. Right, well, Spurs ain't got a game next week, so he's yeah, we might we might have a break. We'll have to see. I'll check to you, lads. We might have a break and we'll see how we get on. But yeah, well, next time we see Henry, I'll say like this: next time we see Henry, he will still be moving house. That's the that's the easiest way <laughs> to say it. Do you know what I mean? He's been moving house. Well, I'm sure he lives. It must be moving into Buckingham Palace, mate, because it's taken him about a month, isn't it? Unbelievable. But Unbelievable. I'm pretty sure he's not even moving house. I'm pretty sure all he's doing is replacing some cupboards in the kitchen. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's just a little bit of refurb. It's not a big house move or anything. I think there's a little bit of, uh, I don't know what's going on, but whatever. It's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Listen, make sure you do that, people. Go follow these kind gentlemen. Make sure that you like and subscribe as well, please. Our next target here is 40K. There's been 500 of you here uh, roughly the whole night, so make sure that you're all uh, hitting a like and a subscribe and Pinned in the comments is Surfshark VPN. Make sure that you have gone and got yourself Surfshark VPN. If you haven't caught EastEnders tonight, then we're just about to show you a snippet. Yes, judges. Hello, Dan. How are you doing? You're all right. Up to you, bro. I'm actually watching the football, mate. This Surfshark VPN is a lifesaver, mate. You can watch the football with a dodgy Wi-Fi, even at the Emirates when you've got a big crowd there and everything like that. Watching the football, unbelievable. Easy to set up. Well, it must be if you've done it, mate. Oh, very, very funny. Even abroad, you can like. You can watch all your favourite programs. It's like being at home, mate. And that's exactly what you guys can do too. Click the link in the description for Surfshark VPN.